many thousand years ago, there was a yogi whose name was Sunira. We believe Sunira was just the next generation after the Saptarishis. He lived and worked in the mountains which are presently in Nepal. She took on an impossible project. He was an incredible guru, but uh, he was not happy with himself. He wanted to create that kind of a being who is absolutely perfect and always synthetic stuff is not of twentieth or twenty-first centuries making way back. He wanted to create a synthetic being, a perfect being who will become a perfect teacher, who will become the ultimate redeemer of humanity, an impossible project. But this is a man of incredible capability, so he took on such a project and he started putting together a being of every kind of quality that you can think of. This longing must have come because this is just after Shiva, the Adi Yogi left, they must have been missing him. They must have been missing him so badly that the longing to create a perfect being must have been a natural longing and maybe a natural project to take up. He worked through his lifetime to create this and towards the end of his life, when this dream of creating a perfect being remained unfulfilled, Yogi Sunira made a prophecy that Long time from now, long, long time from now, this work that I have started will find fulfillment and reverberate, not here, but in the green hills of the south. Our hills are green. We are in the south. So this dream so many people worked on, generation after generation, many yogis try to continue to work on the same half-made project of Sunira, which in the last century, it came to social knowledge because the theosophists worked on it. An innocent Lad Beater and Madam Blavatsky. All three of them took this project up. They said, we are going to make it. They amassed a vast amount of occult knowledge, probably for the first time in the last few hundred years. And definitely for the first time, not in a traditional way but in a modern way. They took up this project and they tried to locate this being. This unfinished project, they want to take it up and complete it. Some work was done. They had the knowledge but they did not have the capability. They acquired much information, but they could not acquire the necessary means to do anything like that. Twice they made serious effort to declare that they have completed the project, the perfect being has come, but it did not work. Another parallel line where another set of yogis who were aware of this Suniras glorious but quite impossible project and with their wisdom they started working upon a similar force to create a similar possibility but with a completely different understanding of the same. The fruition of that parallel line 
of creating a perfect being, but not as a human being, is the making of the Dhyana Linga. it's a perfect being, not in human form because I think many times I have said Dhyanalinga has all the necessary ingredients. It has the energy body of a perfect being. In theory, we can give him a physical body. In theory, it is possible we can add flesh and blood to him and make him stand up and walk. But if he does that, he will no more be a perfect being because then he'll have to eat, then he will have to excrete, then he will have to sleep, then he will have to wake up and rub his eyes in the morning. And people will find fault with him. You said you're perfect but you're eating, you said you're perfect, you're sitting, you said you're perfect, you're standing, you said you're perfect, you're sleeping. So, it is best he remains that way. So whatever Sunira's prophecy has come true but not the way he thought it would. <laughs> Shiva Arpan